This is a Squeeze podcast. We're your shortcut to being informed. Squeeze Kids! It's your daily news fix. Fun, free, fresh. Hello there and welcome to a very special Squiz Kids Q&A, part of our ongoing series of interviews with people in the news where you, the kids of Australia, get to ask the questions. I'm Amanda Bauer and I have the very great privilege and pleasure of coming to you today in both audio and video, that's sound and pictures, from Sydney's Taronga Zoo and our first ever collaboration with Taronga TV. So if you're listening to us on Squiz Kids, you can head over to tarongatv.com and see us in real life. And if you're seeing us on tarongatv.com, you can head over to Squiz Kids and listen to our podcast, a fun, free, fresh take on the daily news for kids aged 8 to 12. Now, Taronga Zoo is one of Australia's biggest zoos. There are 4,000 animals and a killer view of Sydney Harbour. Taronga is actually an Aboriginal word for beautiful view. They sure do have one. And this interview was actually recorded in one of Taronga's classrooms. It's like no classroom you've ever seen before. It's a tropical rainforest and there are cotton top tamarins, their little monkeys, crawling all over the place. I think I might get a little distracted by these cotton top tamarins, but today I know I'm not going to get distracted because <laughs> I am here talking to carnivore supervisor Louise Jinman. Louise, thank you so much for being with us. Can you tell me first, what is a carnivore and what does a carnivore supervisor do? <laughs> well, carnivore is a whole family of animals. So they're, they're classified as a carnivore if they are meat eaters, but not just meat eaters. They have to have the teeth of, of a meat eater. So they've got to have the carnassial teeth. They have the digestive system for processing meat. But what is a little bit confusing in the carnival family is that there's not just meat eaters in there. There's also animals that used to eat meat, but now they're eating more of a plant-based diet. So it's a whole range of animals from your common ones, like the dogs and cats, right through to animals like red pandas and meerkats. So even though my dog eats meat and a little bit of grains or sometimes licks up some of the things that we've dropped on the floor, <laughs> yep. he would still be considered a carnivore. He is definitely considered a carnivore. All right. Now, we have 85,000 kids listening every day. Wow. They're in charge <laughs> of asking the questions, so enough from me. Our first question today comes from a squeeze kid who is interested in becoming a vet and her favourite animal is a tiger. Over to you, Hope. Hi, Louise. My name is Hope. I'm seven years old and I'm from Melbourne. My question is, what is an average day like working as a tiger keeper? What a brilliant question, Hope. So my average day as a tiger keeper, I start at 6.30 in the morning. So nice and early, you've got to be an early riser. And then we check the tigers. So every morning we have to make sure that all seven tigers are there. That's a very important part of our day. We don't want any tigers running around. And then we feed them. So we separate them all so they can all have their breakfast to themselves. Once we've, set, we've fed them, then we have to go in and clean their enclosures. So we go in with our buckets and our rakes and our scoops. Um, if we have to clean ponds, then we'll open valves, clean ponds. So it's all about caring for their environment, their habitat that they're living in. So making sure it's clean, making sure we put out brand new enrichment for them every day so they get something different every single day. And then once they're out on to exhibit, so once they're out there for the public to see, we have to then clean their behind the scenes area. So we do the same thing, clean those, make them beautiful, ready for the tigers to come back in that afternoon. So I think most people, when they think tiger, think rawr, loud, <laughs> roar, danger. And so I think our next question is one that's on a lot of people's minds. Mm -hmm. Sebastian, why don't you ask that question? Hi, Louise. My name is Sebastian. I'm 11 years old and I'm from Grace Tanks. My question is, were you nervous the first time you got close to a tiger? How dangerous are they in real life? Sebastian, that is such a great question. It's one that I do get asked a lot. And I tell you what, when I very first started working with animals like lions and tigers, I was scared. It was a little bit scary. I remember the very first time I was ever cleaning a exhibit with, for a tiger. And my keeper, my senior keeper said, I'm just going to step out for a second, you'll be all right. And I didn't feel all right. Actually, I felt a little bit scared because they are what we would call a dangerous animal. So yeah, they, they are dangerous. If a tiger got out, it wouldn't uh, end well for the person. They are a predator. 
You can imagine your little tiny cat at home, little four kilo cat, and what they're like with, say, maybe a mouse or a bird. Uh, we're, we're talking about a, a big cat who weighs anywhere from 90 to 120 kilos. So they are dangerous. We don't go in to their enclosures with them. We have to work in a situation we call protected contact which is where we work behind Mesh and the cats on the other side. Our next question comes from Amelia, who's coming all the way from Africa, where wow. she lives. Um, and she, I think, must have done some research and seen some video and photos of keepers holding those mm -hmm. babies. Amelia, why don't you ask your question? Hi, Keeper Louise. My name is Amelia. I'm 11 years old and I live in Cape Town, South Africa. My question is, are there any similarities between looking after a tiger cub and a human child? Amelia, tiger cubs, just like human children, can be very cheeky <laughs> and they love to play. So that, that's what they spend a lot of their time doing. They play a lot and that's how they learn about each other. That's how they learn about the world. That's how they learn about play fighting, maybe to prepare them for the future when they may have to fight another tiger. If they were living in the wild, they may well have to fight another tiger for a territory or to breed. So they do all of that when they're young. And I guess that, that would be the biggest similarity. They're dependent on their mum. They drink milk, just like our human babies do. They're mammals. So they're all the things that they have in common. Aside from that, tiger cubs grow up very, very quickly, much faster than children do. So by the time our tigers are 12 months of age or two years of age, they're ready to go off into the wild, whereas human children, of course, aren't ready just then. No, you wouldn't send a two-year-old out to be by themselves, <laughs> would <enough>. you? <laughs> uh, we have a whole class from Hopetown in Western Australia that sent through loads of fantastic questions. Um, and here's one from someone who I think probably has some pets at home. Uh, Fallon, why don't you ask your question? Hi, Louise. My name is Fallon. I'm 10 years old and I'm from Hopetown, Western Australia. My questions are, what do tigers eat? Do tigers learn eating tricks? What age do you start to teach them? Brilliant question, Fallon. So we don't teach them tricks as such, although to the tigers there probably are just tricks. We actually do some training with our cats. They have to learn how to move inside and outside of their holding areas when we need them to, because otherwise they won't go out and be visible for everyone to see, or they won't come in when we need them to. But we also teach them to cooperate in their own care. So that means that we train them to do very specific things, like for instance, to put their paw up on the mesh so we can check their feet, or to open their mouth so we can inspect their teeth. We also train them to move their hip right close to the mesh so that we can do a hand injection, and that means that we can vaccinate them, or they can have an anaesthetic without any need for dart guns, which is how we used to do it in the past. So now we do hand injections. So we can inject the tigers ourselves. They put their hip to the mesh. They do it voluntarily for food. And uh, yeah, so we're, the next thing we're gonna teach our tigers is how to take blood from their tails. So yes, I guess we can teach them tricks and we teach it from a very young age. There was a great question that came through from a quiz kid called Louis. Uh -huh. um, and I think lots of people have this question as well. Louis, take it away. Hi, people, Louise. My name is Louis. I'm 10 years old. And my name is Willa, and I'm 7 years old, and, and we are from Newcastle. Our question is how do you tell the triplet tigers apart? Do the stripes help? Louis, you've got a brilliant name. My name's Louise. Your name's Louis. I love it. So how do we tell them apart? What a brilliant question because a lot of people don't actually know how you tell the tigers apart. They actually have very individual stripes. So they say their stripes are just like our fingerprints which are all completely individual and unique. Their stripes are the same. And the way that we told our little tiger cubs apart was firstly by their tail markings. At the very top of their tail is a very unique marking. And each of those tiger cubs has got a different marking on their tail. For instance, one of them, Malwa, has a vertical stripe on her tail. Tenga, we call her perfect tail because she's got perfect little ringlets on the top of her tail, just like her daddy has. And Pemina, our male, he almost has perfect little ringlets at the top of his tail, but then he's got a big, thick black marking just to the side. So we can easily tell just by looking at their tail markings. Uh, now we have two excellent questions from some siblings who obviously know it's really important to take care of animals' health. Charlotte and Alex, why don't you ask your questions? Hi, my name is Charlotte. I am seven years old and I live in Beecroft, New South Wales. My question for Louise is how do you know a tiger is healthy? You check a dog's nose if it's wet. How do you know a tiger is healthy? Thank you. 
Hi, I'm Amelia and this is Alex. Alex is four years old and his question for Louise is, how do you keep a tiger's teeth clean? We use a toothbrush and toothpaste. What do you use? Alex and Charlotte, two excellent questions. I love questions about animal health because that's a lot of what we do as keepers. We look after their health and working very closely with our veterinary team. So how do we know if our tigers are healthy? Well, we first of all, if they don't feel like eating in the morning. So when we come in in the morning, if they don't feel like their breakfast, that's a pretty big giveaway that they're not feeling well. Sometimes they might have a little bit of an upset tummy from fur and things that they've eaten, which is part of their diet. So that can make their tummy a little bit funny sometimes. They may not want to eat. Then of course we have to monitor them because we can't just go in there and take their temperature. So that's when we talk to our veterinary team and we get a hand from them to make sure that they're getting the best care that they can get. And what about those teeth? Yes. There's a lot of scary teeth in a tiger's mouth. There how do you uh, how do you take care of them? Toothpaste? <laughs> Luckily we don't need to. Well, I guess in a way, toothpaste, they're, they're bones, the food that they're eating. So because they're eating a species appropriate diet, they're eating the exact diet that, that cats are supposed to eat. And that means lots of bones and the bones help to keep those teeth clean. So as they're chomping on the bones, it's actually scrubbing their teeth just the way a toothbrush would. Now, if we had a tiger that for some reason couldn't have bones, we would teach them to have their teeth brushed. And that means we have to teach them to open their mouth for us and then teach them to accept a toothbrush. That would take a little bit of time. It's not something that you can do straight away, but we do it with our sun bears. So we could absolutely do it with a tiger as well if we needed to. Wow. The next question comes from a whole grade three, four class. They all got together. They must have worked together beautifully because they've agreed on the same question. <laughs> uh, so year three, four in Kelso, New South Wales, take it away. Hi, my name is Brilliant question, Kelso Primary School. What do they have in common? They have a lot in common. Actually, they come from the same family. They're a little bit different though, of course. Tigers are big and they're from a family that we call Panthera. Whereas our domestic cats, our the little cats that we keep at home, they're from a family called Felis. So the big cats like the tigers can roar, but they can't purr anymore. Whereas our little cats can purr, but they can't roar. But they still have the same claws, they have the same environment I guess so they, they they hunt the same way tigers of course hunt bigger animals than what domestic cats do but they use their tail they use their body in exactly the same way I guess there's one important difference that zookeepers get to to know about but I guess not pet owners is that tigers their coat feels more like a, a dog to touch whereas our beautiful domestic cats have got that lovely soft silky coat so that's another difference in them as well. So you can't cuddle up to a tiger and get quite the same no. soft feeling. Ah. And tigers don't come in long-haired varieties like some of our domestic cats do. And nor hairless. <laughs> yes, that's right, exactly. <laughs> that's probably a good thing. Yes. <laughs> uh, we had some amazing questions from uh, St Lizzie's in Brisbane. Uh, the Year 3, 4 class filled their whole whiteboard with post-it notes. Wow. Dozens and dozens of questions. Way to go, St. Lizzie's. We can only choose two. Uh, Charlotte, why don't you go first? Hi, Keeper Louise. My name is Charlotte and I'm eight from Brisbane. My question is, do you look after any other animals in the zoo? What is your favourite animal? Thanks, Charlotte. Yes, I do look after other animals. So I'm very privileged that I get to look after all the carnivores that we have here at Taronga Zoo, the ones that the meat-eating carnivores. My favourite animal, that is a that is a hard one because I have lots of favourites. I love dogs, are one of my favourite animals in the world. And we have beautiful fennec fox here, they're a type of dog. I also love the lions. Meerkats are also a big favourite. Super cute. Yes, but of course tigers as well. Tigers are definitely a favourite animal of mine, but it's hard to pick. They're also beautiful, they're also wonderful, they're so unique and different that it's hard to just pick one. So I, 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 I struggle to pick one. What's well, the amazing thing about working <laughs> at a zoo? You get to see them all, yeah. all the time too, don't you? So Emily from St Lizzie's um, also had a really great question that I think is, is going to be um, an interesting one to hear your answer. Emily, why don't you ask that? Hi, Keeper Louise. My name is Emily. I'm eight years old from St Elizabeth School. My question is, why do you keep tigers in the zoo? Do they help tigers in the wild? 
Emily, the reason that we keep tigers in the zoo is because we do need to help protect them and we need to help educate people about them. Their numbers are really low in the wild. So Sumatran tigers, there's only around three or 400 tigers left there in the wild. So their numbers are very low. And without us being able to make that personal connection with them, being able to like look them in the eye or they look us in the eye, it's hard to make a real personal con connection just from a photo or even just from a documentary. So the, one of the purposes of keeping them is to help educate, to make that personal connection so that you can actually help protect and conserve them as well. So help join us on our mission. And also because they are a very important population, we call them an insurance population. And that means if anything happens in Sumatra, if there's a catastrophe, so if tigers for some reason get sick or we lose a lot of tigers in the wild and their numbers drop down too low, then zoos around the world and Taronga Zoo included can help with our tigers that we have to breed those tigers and to make sure that we don't lose them completely. So we could, zoos could repopulate the wild if that, uh, if it came to that. We don't want it to come to that though. We want to protect their habitat, protect the tigers already in Sumatra, but share their message with people just like you guys. You talked about how important it was for people to make that connection so they can join you on the mission of protecting them. And our final question, which I know that everyone is going to want to know the answer to, because you talked about how important it was for people to make the connection and come on the mission and the journey with you of protecting tigers. Emily's asking this question. I know I need to hear the answer to it, and I think the kids of Australia do too. Emily, over to you. Hi, Louise. My name is Emily. I'm eight years old and I live in Camden. My question is, what can kids like us do to help save Sumatran tigers? Emily, what a brilliant question, because saving tigers is so important. So one of the ways that you can help to protect tigers and save tigers is by coming and visiting Taronga Zoo, learning about tigers, learning about the, the things that they face in the wild, some of the threats in the wild. One of the big ones is palm oil. So palm oil plantations obviously threaten their habitat and you can actually learn about that. We've got a, a plane ride that you can do and, and you actually learn about and you see, you can actually see the footage, the images of how much the plantations, the palm oil plantations have actually changed the landscape, affecting animals from the tiger all the way through to the, to the insects. You know, it's changed the whole ecosystem. So farmers are cutting down the rainforest beautiful rainforest. and then planting the palm The plantations. tiger's home, that's right, is getting replaced. This beautiful, diverse rainforest full of life is getting replaced with palm oil plantations. And it's not that palm oil is bad as such, but we need palm oil to be sustainable. So there, there is companies that are working to only source sustainable, certified sustainable palm oil. So we do need to just be a little bit careful about what we're putting into our shopping trolleys. And that's probably the simplest way that we can all help protect tigers and conserve them is by being careful about what goes in that shopping trolley. From little people, big changes can happen. We know yep. that for sure. Absolutely. People always, I could sit here all day talking to you about tigers and animals, but unfortunately that's all the time we have got for today with Taronga TV and Squeeze Kids. We have one last very important job to do. Uh -huh. We had lots of incredible questions come from all over Australia and Taronga has generously donated an amazing prize for the best question. We have this incredibly cute, very <laughs> soft, not like a real tiger, we now know, tiger and this amazing book discover the animals of the world who are you going to choose it was a really really hard decision because all the questions were so incredible you guys did such a good job but there is one question and it's it's about how do you know if a tiger is healthy and how do you care for their teeth so charlotte and alex you guys are going to get the prize because that's what I do. I care for the tigers and we do look after their teeth and I think it's a great thing that you ask those questions. And I love it that it was a brother and a sister working together, teamwork. That's what you have here every day too is the teamwork it at is. the zoo. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for teaching us so much about tigers. My pleasure. Have a most excellent day. Over and out. Squeeze Kids is proudly supported by the Judith Nielsen Institute for Journalism and Ideas. It's your daily news fix. Fun. Free. Fresh.